let's talk about series circuits. So I've had some people recently um, working on series and parallel and combination circuits, and they struggle with uh, usually the combination portion of this, but this first video, I just wanna talk about series circuits in relation to voltage, current, resistance, and power, and how the relationship works between all of them. So let's go over just kind of some general rules for circuits. So we have a thing called Kirchhoff's voltage law. And uh, what he had discovered was that in a series, series circuit, voltage actually drops across each resistance and it drops uh, across each resistance in a fashion so that all of the voltage that is dropped over all resistances equals the source voltage. You got 120 volts and you got some resistance. If you got like one, two, three, a little bit of voltage is gonna drop across each one, but the total amount of that voltage drop is always going to equal your source voltage. So this becomes handy when we start trying to solve for voltage drops across certain resistors so that we can check our answer against source voltage. So it's really helpful to understand total voltage drop. If there's even one resistor, the total voltage drop is gonna equal whatever your source voltage is. Then Kirchhoff's current law uh, says that in a series circuit specifically, the amount of current through that circuit is constant. So it doesn't really matter what your resistances are. In a series circuit, when you have one resistor and another resistor and another resistor, they're all just one big resistor, right? So whatever that resistance is that's gonna affect your total current, because that's what affects current, right? We take voltage, we apply it across a resistor and the current will just flow based off of how much is resisting it. So if you increase the size of a resistor, you're, there's gonna be more opposition to current flow, so you're gonna have less current, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be constant over all resistances because they're just in line with each other making one large uh, resistor. So just remember, uh, voltage is going to change or voltage is going to drop and current is going to stay constant. When we get into parallel circuits, that sort of flips a little, uh, but for series, just think about you're stacking things in order, you're dropping voltage across each one and your current is the same. Then once we get to resistance, your total resistance is gonna be just the sum of all of those resistances, right? I just said that we're gonna have a total resistance. If we've got a bunch of little resistances, we're just adding them all up to make one large resistance. And that is gonna be able to be checked by the current that we just said should be a constant. So the formula for that is RT or R total. Uh, is equal to resistance one, resistance two, resistance three, and resistance N, which just means how, whatever number of resistances, you could go one through like a hundred if you have a hundred resistors in the circuit. So anytime you see like RN or IN, that just means any number, like all of them, however many there are. Um, and then power is usually figured out by uh, I squared R, so I squared R is a formula that we're, we're asking how much power is dissipated or transferred from electrical energy into maybe heat energy or light energy or something like that. So that's the general formula for it. Although we're gonna do something a little bit different once we get in here, we're gonna figure out what the power for one resistor is, what the power for another resistor is, and then we're gonna add those two together to figure out what the total amount of power dissipated or amount of power that is changing forms from one to the other to create that heat dissipation or that light uh, radiation coming off of that light source. So those are the four quantities. I'm not gonna get into inductance and capacitance. Um, we'll get into that later, but this is the general four things that you're gonna be talking about once you are in a resistive circuit. So let's look at an example. Um, I know this is kind of messy. I'm sorry, there's a lot of values over there, um, but I'll go through each one. So say that we have a series circuit, right? This is what a series circuit looks like. We have resistance one or what we're calling R1 and resistance two or R2. Resistance one is a two ohm resistor. Resistance two is a four ohm resistor. And we uh, take our clamp on ammeter and we go across the wire and we figure out we've got 8.3 amps flowing when we have a 50 volt uh, power supply. So say we got a battery, it's 50 volts. We connect it across resistance one and across resistance two and they're connected between each other. That's a series circuit. Um, we're going to get 8.3 repeating amps that are gonna be drawn through that circuit. So we know some values, right? Now we have to figure out if 
all of these things that I said on the last slide are actually true. So if you're ever analyzing a circuit, there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can analyze a series circuit, depending on what value we're trying to figure out. So the first is gonna be voltage. So what we need to figure out is what is the voltage drop across each one of the resistors. When we take a voltage of 50 volts and we connect it across a resistor, there's gonna be a drop in voltage. And however many of these resistors we have, each one of them is gonna have another drop and all of these drops will affect the total voltage. Um, so we take E1, E equals I times R. We're using just general Ohm's law here. So uh, voltage is 50 volts, the amperage is 8.3, and resistance one, R1, says two ohms. So if we take 8.3, our amperage, times two, which is two ohms, we should get 16.6 .6 volts. We will actually experience a 16.6 .6 volt drop once we connect our source across that resistance. So we're gonna hang on to that voltage, 16.6 .6 repeating. Then if we go to our second resistor, we still have a 50 volt power supply, still have 8.3 amps, but R2 is four ohms. So we're gonna multiply amperage 8.3 times four ohms, and we get a 33.3 .3 volt drop across that resistor. Um, it's a larger resistor, so there's going to be a more extreme voltage drop. And it's twice, you can see it's, it's literally twice the voltage drop of the other resistor, which is half the size. So the math works out nicely. Twice as much resistance, twice as much voltage drop. So that gives us the voltage dropped across each one. Now the next thing to do is you wanna take those two voltage drops and ensure that the math points to the voltage source being the same as both voltage drops. So if we take 16.6, .6, our first voltage drop for R1, and we take 33.3, .3, our second voltage drop uh, for R2, we should get 50 volts. And because the math is silly on a calculator, 0.6 repeating and 0.3 repeating, you're gonna get 49.9999999 it's 50 volts. So that, that matches, the math checks out and the uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law is proven. So that's all voltage stuff with series circuits. Now let's get into current. Now we're still gonna be using Ohm's law, but instead of trying to solve for voltage, we're trying to solve for current. So we're gonna be using I equals E over R. So to solve for our current, we know that our voltage is 50 volts, right? divided that by six because the total resistance in this circuit is one resistor plus another resistor. So four plus two is six. So 50 divided by six is 8.3, 8.3 amps. So Kirchhoff's current law is proven that it, it doesn't matter what is going on in the resistor or in the, the number of resistors that you have because all of them together form one large resistor. So the total current through that circuit is just gonna be constant. It's not gonna drop across each one like voltage does. Next is resistance. So resistance, we need to figure out our total resistance. We have one, we have another one. The awesome thing about series circuits is you just add them all together. If you have like 15 resistors throughout the circuit, you just add them all together and whatever the total number is, that's your total resistance. So it's pretty easy to solve that. We just said that in the last example, you take RT or what is the total resistance um, and then it's R1 plus R2, so that's six ohms. We just said that up here. But the last thing that we're gonna do is look at power. We have to analyze the power dissipation from this resistor from each one of these resistances. So there's gonna be a certain amount of like heat loss, which is I squared R loss, which I talked about in the first slide, P equals I squared times R, uh, but we're not gonna use that formula. It's just to show that we have a little bit of that power that's transferred from electrical energy into heat energy or light energy. There's gonna be some of that that's dissipated. So if we're at a heating element, right, in like a toaster, the heat that's coming off of that is the change or the transfer from the electrical energy to heat energy. So how much of that is transferring or dissipated or consumed, a lot of words that people use, but how many watts are gonna be coming off of that thing? So then with power, it's uh, we're using P equals E times I. This is the Joule's law portion of Ohm's law. It's not actually Ohm's law, but it is a, uh, it is a different formula wheel. So P equals E times I, but we're gonna be taking P1, the 
power of resistance one times the voltage that's dropped across that when we apply a voltage to figure out what that resistor is going to dissipate. Because remember, we're not getting the full amount of voltage across that, we're getting a dropped voltage. So that dropped applied voltage uh, times whatever that specific resistance is, is gonna give us a certain amount of dissipation, a certain amount of like heat coming off of that thing. So P1 equals E1 times I, that would be 16.6 .6 for our E1. We said E1, right? times 8.3 amps, and that's 138.9 watts coming off that one resistor. Then we take resistor two, that is P2 equals E2 times I. So E2 was 33.3 volts dropped. Um, we have 8.3 amps in our circuit. Multiply those together and you get 277.8 watts. Those are the two like amount of joules that are being transferred from electrical energy into heat energy. Um, so we want to combine those two together to get like, what is the total amount of heat coming off of both of these things or uh, energy transferred into light or whatever our, our actual load is doing. Um, and so P total or total power equals P1 plus P2. So you just take those two and add them together and we get 416.7 watts total for the whole circuit. So. Uh, hopefully that helps clear up things with series circuits. Series circuits are a little bit cleaner, a little nicer, easier to work with. Uh, then next we will get into parallel circuits.